1 Kings chapter number 18. I'm going to begin reading with verse number 17. Everyone stand with us, if, uh, if you will, as we honor the Word of God this morning. I'll read several verses here. First Kings chapter number 18, begin reading with verse number 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel, unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under, and, it will, and I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning, even until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no answer, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances till the blood gushed out upon them. It came to pass when midday was past that the prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, and there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, and to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid them on the barrel and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time, and they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time, and they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. It came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the reading of the word of God. Blessed, I pray, help us to rightly divide the word of truth. God, forgive me of sin, cleanse me. Lord, as I stand here with the word of God open before us, I pray, God, you'd help us, Lord, and give us something today that will feed our souls and will help us in the days to come. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I read a very lengthy portion of Scripture today, but it is to tell a story of a man that knew the Lord. Amen. We've been studying Elijah uh, for some several services now. We I digress for a little bit on last Sunday, 
And as we preached a homecoming message, boy, God blessed, and I appreciate that. But now again, we're, we're speaking about Elijah. We're preaching to you about a man uh, that followed the Lord, knowing not a whole lot about his upbringing. But we know this, he followed God, he loved the Lord, and he was a brave man in the sight of all the adversity that he was facing. Now, I'll tell you, friend, today, we need these messages on Elijah because I believe with all my heart, and again I say, I believe with all my heart that Jesus is coming soon. I believe that it's just around, I believe it's nearer than I think it is. I believe his coming is closer than I believe it is. I plan on having a meeting here sometime coming up. I hope we, if we're here, amen, uh, if we're here that long and Jesus don't come back first, this world is shaping up for the Antichrist just as fast as it can. It is shaping up for a one world religion very quickly. It is shaping up for a one world currency real fast and the mark of the beast to come on. And I say even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. But I'll tell you, friend, however many days we've got left to live, we need to be like Elijah, amen? We need to be a man or a woman uh, that will serve the Lord and not back down and serve him in, in spite of adversity. Now, I'll title our message this morning as uh, Elijah, the challenge on Mount Carmel. Now, I've been there on Mount Carmel, and they've got a statue erected of Elijah up there, and it's a wonder to stand there and wonder just where did he build the altar, just where did he pour the water on, and where did the fall of the fire fall from heaven. But I'll tell you, friend, it's real. This is not a made-up story. This is real events of real people. Now, he lived in a day when Israel had turned against God, and, and uh, Ahab had uh, 400 prophets of Baal, and there were 400 prophets of the grove, and the question in all the message here, who is God? The question that Elijah has to them, who do you believe is God? Who is it? Who is your God? Well, we're going to prove it here today, Elijah said. We're going to find out who God is. Elijah had, had all the confidence in the world to, make, to do what he did because he knew that his God was real. Are you confident, amen, in your heart today that your God's real? Are you sure in your heart today that the God you worship is a real God? I, I, you know, again, I, I look at creation and I look at the Word of God and I see how true it is and I see how, you know, the history is told in the, in the book of God and I again look at nature and all the things that God's done and I say, yes, there is a God in heaven. But you know, the old devil come along, he'll tell you once in a while, I, it's just like they've always told you, it's just a made up thing, it's just a made up story. When we die, it, we're, over, we're done, we're through with no friend. No friend, when you die, you're going to be somewhere for eternity. And Elijah, he, Elijah believed in the same God that I believe in. Elijah's in heaven today. We'll get to that later, but Elijah's in heaven today. Hey, friend, one of these days, you and I are going to go to heaven. Amen. We need to trust God. We need to serve God. We need to believe what he says and follow him in these last days that we live in. Amen. Now, I'll give you a few things real quickly, and then uh, we'll preach to you as the Lord leads us this morning. As these men began to pray, and I'm getting ahead of myself, to their God, nothing happened. Nothing happened. The lessons in the, uh, of the message, a question of the message today, what is the greatest need of the church? One of the greatest questions of the day is, what is the need of the church? Uh, preacher, we need a bigger fellowship building. We couldn't hardly fit into it. Do we really need it? Do we really need it? Preacher, we're going to need a new building one of these days. Do we really need it? Preacher, we need the, the pews to be filled up every Sunday. I want that. And I would like to see that. But if you're here and I'm here, amen, that's what we need. Now that's what we need. We welcome anybody to come to Gables Creek Baptist Church. We invite new members to come if they're born again and saved in the grace of God. But friend, that is these things are things that we believe we need and some things that we want, 
But the biggest need of the church today is for the fire of God to fall upon the church. Amen. I'm talking about the Pentecostal fire of the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. Friend, I like it when Jesus shows up around this place. I like it when the preacher comes behind the pulpit. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the great Spirit of God. And friend, I like it when the fire of, fire of God falls upon a worship service. But we need it upon the church. We need it for the power of the church to go on in these last days. We've lived in a long time, in a long day, when people have been fr afraid of the Spirit of God. They'd be afraid they'd be labeled as a charismatic or some sort. I want to tell you, the church needs today what it did on the day of Pentecost, the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. We need a feeling. We need a renewing of the Spirit of God upon the church. I need it upon my life. And I may serve and worship God as never before. How do you and I obtain this fire of God? Everybody bow your head just a minute. I may not be getting through here just exactly like I want to. Let me ask you something. How many in the building believe that we need the fire of God upon our lives? Will you raise your hand? Okay, I'm headed the right direction. You can look back up here again. I thought I might have lost a few of you when I was talking about that. Amen. I know we need the fire and the power of God upon us. How do we do that? Verse number 38 says that the fire of the Lord fell. It means it come down from heaven. The fire of God fell. Now, what happened? When did it fall? Number one, the fire of God fell when the altar was repaired. The altar of God had been broken down where the people used to pray had been done away with and broken down and the worshipers of Baal had taken over and were, and were uh, worshiping a God that could not even hear them. They were worshiping a God that would fail them. They were worshiping a God that did fail them. But the first thing Elijah done, when all of this was done, when they did all they were going to do, when they cried out to their God all they could cry out, when they cut themselves and really uh, made fools of themselves, Elijah did, he started doing the right thing to show the people. In many of our lives today, the altar of the Lord has been broken down. We have quit crying out to God. We're not praying like we should. We're not calling on the name of the Lord like we should. And the, is your altar broken down or have you repaired the altar of God? The first thing that we must do as a church and as a believer, as a people of God, is to repair the altar of prayer that we might speak to the Lord, that we might converse with Him that we might talk to him. That's the first thing that Elijah did. The fire of God will only fall upon a congregation of people and upon an individual when we've repaired the altar and we've cried out to the Lord for his help. Oh, friend, today I encourage you to pray. I encourage you to call upon the name of the Lord and let him, uh, let him have his rightful place in your life and mine. You say, well, everything's right with me. Please pray for the preacher. Please pray for me more than anything in these last days that I live in. I want the fire of God upon my ministry. I want the fire of God upon my preaching. I want the fire of God upon my church. I want the power of God. Amen. That we might in these last days be excited about serving the true and the living God. You're going to think like Elijah did that sometimes you're all alone. But remember, if you've got God, you've got all you need. Amen? First, Colossians chapter number 1, verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. If we're going to have the power of God and the fire of God, he's going to have to be first. God's going to have to be first. What's first in your life? What's first in my life? If I'm to have the power of God, if God's going to have his control over me, then he must have first place in my life. Number two, the fire of God fell when the sacrifice was offered. He cut up the bullet. 
He put it on the altar. And until the sacrifice was offered, the fire of God did not fall. Now, if you want the fire of God on your life, if you want the power of God on your life, you know what you must do? <coughs> Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. If you want the fire of God upon your life, you've got to make a sacrifice and say, Lord, take me, God, use me. Elijah offered himself to God, and God used him. Elijah was exactly where God wanted him to be, and God used him in that day of the wicked hour that he was living in. And again, let me say, we're living in a wicked hour. Have you got the courage of Elijah to offer yourself a living sacrifice unto the Lord? Oh, how I need that. Oh, how I want to be that. How I want to be that one that will offer himself a living, not a dead sacrifice, a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Why? Because a living sacrifice can work and move and do and speak the things that God would have you and me to do. Amen? Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of, the, of righteousness unto God. We yield ourselves to Him as, as members that uh, once were dead. And the Bible says you and I were dead in trespasses and sin. Oh, friend, if God made us alive through Jesus Christ, certainly we should use that life to serve Him. And be what he wants us to be. Amen. Then number three, the fire of God fell when the water was poured out. And those, the sorcerers and those prophets and the, the, the wizards, so to speak, of that day had a way of being liars and being deceptive. And Elijah knew that. Elijah knew that they were full of trickery, and if, if he just did that without pouring the water on, they'd say, well, he just used some trickery. But what Elijah did was to make it so that there would be no doubt in the people's minds that the fire from heaven had fallen from heaven. And so he poured the water out, not once, not twice, but three times he poured the water upon the altar, soaking the water. Have you ever tried to start a, a wet wood fire? It is very, very difficult, very hard. to. If you ever get it started, but you'll never get it started without a little bit of dry wood. You'll never get it started until you dry it out or you got a little bit of dried wood. But that little spark of dryness, can set on fire a whole pile of dry, of wet brush. I've done it. I've done it. You catch a brush pile out with snow on top of it. You dig down through there and get under that where it's dry and light it on fire. And guess what? It'll burn. Amen. It'll burn. Listen, friends, sometimes we're dried out. Sometimes we're ready to burn. I want to tell you something, friend. I want to be so on fire for the Lord, and you should so want to be on fire for the Lord that no matter how much wet wood comes around you, you'll still be able to burn. Amen? What is wet wood? The naysayers of the day are the wet wood. The people, maybe somebody sitting here this morning say, Oh, preacher, you're just talking. There ain't no way none of this can ever happen. We can never see revival again. We can never have a stir of God again. We can never have the power of God again. We'll never see that again. It's too late, preacher. You're wet wood. You need to get your wood dried out. Amen. Because I'm telling you, as I stand here before you today, God is able to, to put the fire of God upon this place. Amen. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be here. I'll just tell you. I'll be honest with you. If I didn't believe God wanted to bless us and help us, and if I believed it was done and over with, I'd go, I'd move on. But I don't. I believe God in heaven wants to put the fire upon this place. Oh, friend, today we hear not much of revival. We, not, we hear not much of a stir of God. 
But friend, I want to hear it and I want to see it and I want it to be in this day. I want it to be in this hour. I want it to be in this church that the fire of God falls. And then the water of the Spirit of God moves upon this place. If you're wet wood today, you need to get in the Word of God and get dried out and understand that God in heaven, in the darkest days of Israel, in the darkest days when Elijah thought himself, he wasn't, but he thought himself to be the only one left standing, he still had the fire of God on him. Amen. You ought to determine in your heart, and I should determine in my heart, that if I'm the last one standing, thank God I want to stand with the power of God on my life. Amen. I want to stand with the, with the Spirit of God moving, with the Spirit of God directed, that the power of God might be real. Amen. And if we're the last church in the community, if we're the last church in the, in the surrounding area that's on fire for God, let it be so. Hallelujah. But we want the power of God. Amen. We want the fire of God. You get, friend, in praying, you get what you really desire to have in the will of God. And if you really desire to have the fire of God, friend, you and I, everyone can have that. Repair the altar. Repair the altar first. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Pour on the water. So everybody know, amen, what you're doing is real. Then number four, the prayer, the power of God fell, the fire from heaven fell when Elijah prayed. Now let's read that prayer once again. <clears throat> Verse number 36 is 63-word prayer. Now you remember these prophets of Baal, they started early in the morning. And uh, Elijah mocked them. Elijah said, oh, Cry loud, for he is a God. Cry loud. Scream louder. Use louder your voices to cry out to God. So Elijah's making fun of him. Boy, does Elijah not show confidence and bravery? You know why? Because he had the power of God on his life. We'll not be able to stand against evil when we got the power of God on our life. We'll not be afraid to stand in this wicked world when we got the power of God on our life. Young folks here today, you ought to desire more than anything else in your lifetime to have the power of God on your life. To have the power of God working through you is what you need to make it in this world that we live in. So Elijah said, okay, uh, he's a God, maybe he's talking to somebody else, that's what he said. Maybe, maybe your God's talking to somebody else. You need to interrupt his conversation, and you need to make sure he's hearing you because, you know, your God can't hear everybody at once. Hey, my God can hear everybody at one time that's praying. Amen. You know why? Because my God's real. Elijah knew that Baal was not real. He saw, or maybe he's out chasing something. Maybe he's pursuing, maybe he's out chasing something and he's away from his post. My God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My, my Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven right now. He's not going anywhere because he's God. He'll be with me till the end of days. Maybe he's pursuing or maybe he's gone on a trip. Maybe he's on vacation, Elijah said. Maybe he's gone to the, uh, sorry, Baptist can't say that. Maybe he's gone to the coast <laughs> for a day or two. Maybe, maybe he's down there fishing on the side of the beach. Maybe he's down there uh, just having a big time on vacation. He's on a journey. You just keep hollering sooner or later, he'll hear you. Now that's mockery. Or maybe he's asleep. My God never sleeps or slumbers, amen? But Elijah knew that, but he, he said, maybe your God, maybe he's taking a nap. Maybe he's tired from doing nothing, and he's taking a nap because so far he ain't done nothing for him. Maybe he's tired. So y'all just cry a little louder. Maybe you crawl, cry hard, hard enough and that he will be awakened. So you just pray and cry louder that you might awaken him. 
And they did that, and they cried aloud and even went to the point of cutting themselves, which was a, was a part of their religious worship. They cut themselves, jumped up on the altar screaming and hollering, and the, their blood run down on that very altar. And Elijah let it go on. You know what? They would not learn. They would not live. They could not understand that their God was not real. So they continued on till the evening time. Elijah said it unto all the people. I'm just hearing now. Come near to me. In the language we understand, y'all come over here. Come near to me. Y'all gather around now. Everybody come around. Everybody gather around. And he began to repair that altar. He began to fix that altar back. He got 12 stones and put them up there, the 12 tribes of Israel. And he said, boys, you bring the wood. Put the wood on there. He said, all right, bring me the bullet. I took the process. They slaughtered, killed that thing, cut him up, put him on the altar. Now he said, go get the water. Now y'all remember, it hadn't rained, okay? Water was a precious thing. But he got the water and he poured it on there. And all these prophets of Baal standing there watching him. What is he doing? They still don't believe. What would y'all think if someone tried to start a fire and the first thing they did went pour barrels of water on the wood? I mean, that's crazy. Now, if it was us, we would be. But Elijah had all the confidence in God. He didn't have the confidence in that wet wood to burn. He didn't have the confidence in that water to do anything. He had confidence in God. God's going to consume that sacrifice. So he had the water poured on. He said, now, and I, I, I just can imagine it was deathly quiet around there. You couldn't hear nothing. But in putting the wood on the altar, everybody just looking to see what he's going to do. Oh, there may have been the loud mouth of two standing back there saying, you crazy, Elijah, which there always will be. You're crazy, Elijah. They did it in Noah's day. They might have been those in Elijah's day that ridiculed him. But I got a feeling when he started doing what he was doing, he had everybody's attention. And he said, all right. At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, means that he got up next to that altar. And he lifted his head to the Lord. Now remember, these prophets of Baal have been calling all day long and nothing happened. I believe their voice was gone. And they're waiting for Elijah to start jumping up and down on the altar and screaming and, cry and crying and hollering out to God. Listen, if you want to pray that way, that's fine with me. I don't, it, that's fine with me if you're praying to the true and living God. You do however you want to talk to God. But I talk to him well when I'm driving down the highway. I, I was driving down the road the other day and I was praying and singing something and there was a car drove up next to me and they said, what in the world is wrong with that car? I think I was singing, what a day that will be. And I was praying and asking God for his blessing. You know, you do whatever you want to do when you're, when you're talking to God. I've been out in the mountains. A bunch of fellas told me one time we got out in the mountains and, and uh, we was hunting deer sign. And uh, they said, I may have told you this, it's, it, it's interesting anyway, I think. And uh, we got to praying and I got to crawling out to God. And later they said, preacher, we ain't taking you no more. You scared all the deer off. trying to remember if they killed anything that year. I don't think they did because they made that comment. <laughs> Probably. But hey, it makes no difference, friend. Those folks that called out to God and cried out to God and tried to wake him up and tried to stir him up and Baal was dead. He could not hear them. So they, as he gathers around the altar, he lifts up his head to the Lord and he says, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, Lord, let it be known this day, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. Lord, you let everybody know here that I've been around all day that's been calling out to Baal. Let everybody know that you're God. 
that you're the true God in Israel. And he says this, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Light says, now, Lord, while you're doing that, let them know I'm your true servant. Let them know that, that I'm your man. I want them to know that I'm your man. And then verse 37, his prayer changes around a little bit. And I, believe he, I believe he says this, hear me, O Lord. Hear me. I believe, his, I believe his prayer changes here just a little bit. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. That this people may know that thou art the Lord God. I believe re-emphasizing what he said in the start of the prayer. Let the people know that you are God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Lord, let them know that you're working in their lives. Let them know that you're working in them. Then after he prayed those 63 words, that 63 word uh, prayer, guess what happened? The fire fell. Hey, friend. If you want the fire of heaven to fall upon you, be right with the Lord. Call on God, ask Him, and you'll have the power of God in your life. So I'll tell you, friend, today, the best thing we can have in our life is the power of God. Why do we want the fire of the Lord to fall on us? So that we will be empowered to serve Him. Let me ask you today, friend. You want the power of God on your life. Church, do we want revival? Do we really want revival in our church? Does it excite you to think about the house of God and worshiping Him and coming around, uh, you know, coming around this place and feeling God's Spirit? Does that excite you? Or do you want to be the normal church today? Of they come in and sit down and Y'all not as quiet as you used to be. Hey, man, you're getting, you, I like that, but it don't, don't make anything work any better, but I like that. But then, there are some churches that I could preach like this and I wouldn't get a holy grunt out of nobody. <laughs> I've been there and done that. People sit there and look at you. I preach you bless me if you can. You help me if you can. I, I dare you. Hey, I've been there and people look at me like, what's he talking about? Hey, I'm telling you, friend, we need some life in our churches. I look at every one of you every Sunday and make sure everybody's breathing. Y'all are. We know we got that kind of life, but we need the power of God. We need the, we need the Spirit of God moving in our church. I'm not afraid of that. Are you afraid of that? See, people have gotten so afraid that we'll be labeled something. Hey, Elijah didn't care. He didn't care about the rest of the crowd. He wanted the power of God and the fire of God upon him. Friend, we need the power of God upon ourselves and upon our church. Now, I'm not talking about nothing foolish. I'm just talking about the fire of God. I'm just talking about the power of God. And I'll tell you something. God's been blessed around here lately. I've been going home wore out. But listen, it ain't about me. It's about God. Amen. It's not about the church. It's about Him and His power falling on earth and working through us. What do you want today? What is the chief desire of your heart today? Is it to come and worship God? Is it to live your life to serve Him and do His will and have the power of God about you that others may see Jesus in you? Or just go away and say, well, I went to church today. I'm happy. Many people do it. What do you want today? While every head's bowed, no one looking around, I'm through.